I found this phone line interface module on AliExpress, which generates all the required landline phone voltages and provides an audio path. So I made an evaluation board, sponsored by PCBWay, to try it out. This module can be used to test telephones or modems by creating a simulated phone line environment where they can be operated, and this can be useful for creating an intercom, or for ringing prop phones in a stage setting, or other nostalgic ideas. It conveniently operates from 3.3 to 5 volts, and it includes a DC to DC boost converter, so it can generate the typical 48 volts on hook necessary for a telephone service, as well as a higher voltage ring signal. There are some input and output control lines, including a switch hook to tell when the phone is on or off hook, and there's another signal that we would toggle in software at a certain frequency, maybe around 20 hertz and that generates the ring voltage on the phone line. And since we only want to do that when the phone is on hook, we could read this switch hook signal and make sure the phone is on hook, then send the higher ring voltage out. There's also an audio in and an audio out pin, so if we want to get audio out of the phone line or play back audio into the phone system, we can use these pins. With an Arduino or other processor controlling all of these signals, we can simulate having a telephone central office managing all the phone activities, and in the future I plan to use more than one of these devices in a larger overall project. The recommended application circuit shows a few support components for the module, including filter or audio coupling capacitors, and there's some voltage clamping and optional surge suppression for lightning on the lines, and optional overcurrent protection, so we're clamping the voltages on the tip and ring of the phone line to make sure they don't go too excessive, positive or negative, and I don't need this level of robustness on a workbench environment, so I'm just using these basic components here, where I can couple audio in and out, and I have an RJ phone jack to plug in a phone, and of course a header to get voltage supply to the module, provide the analog input and output audio path, and all of the control signals for this module. So now an Arduino can hook up here, and even power the unit from the Arduino 5 volt supply, and we can get some phone functionality to test out this module. I have a function generator set up to give 20 hertz logic level 5 volts, so that's going into the forward reverse pin on the module, and the ring mode pin is high because we want to be ringing the phone. So when I turn on the function generator and it starts toggling forward and reverse, it's going to put 70 something volts on the tip and ring of the phone line and alternating the polarity back and forth simulating a 70 something volt ring signal. When I have the signal generator ringing at 20 hertz on the logic control, the tip and ring are alternating polarity from 0 to 70 something volts at 20 hertz. I have a splitter on the RJ connector so I can go to the phone here, but also to this RJ breakout board so I can put scope probes and meter probes. So this is configured in standby mode without ringing, so ring mode is grounded and the forward reverse pin is grounded as the data sheet says to do. So with the phone on hook, I'm getting 45 and a half volts on the meter, which is close to the 48 volts you should normally see, and when I take the phone off hook as if to make a call, it drops in this case to 6.4 volts, which is within expected range. Now the phone is on hook, so between tip and ring we've got 0 volts on one and 48 or so on the other. I've added this trace on top for the audio path on the module, so if I take the phone off hook and the voltage should drop way down, now if I press a button, or if there's any other audio, I should see it here. So I'll press a button, and there it is. If I change the time scale, there's our dual tone for various buttons. Two different audio frequencies mixed together for dual tone multi-frequency. And I can also talk into it and see the audio there. So the audio path works for getting audio out. So now if I keep the phone off hook and lay it aside for a minute, I'm going to take a 1 kilohertz audio sine wave 
see if I can get it connected in without breaking anything. This wire should be going to the audio in path on the module, so it should be audible in the phone. And we can see it on the phone line and the audio out path. Of course, there may be noise and disturbance with all the connections going on. So I set it to trigger on one of the tip or ring lines, the green one here, just because it's cleaner than this actual audio out. I'm not sure if this is the cabling. The audio path is working. I can investigate it further later. While I'm testing out the basic features, I'm going to incorporate this other DTMF decoder project to monitor what touch tone keys are pressed when a phone is picked up. Now I have the phone and the module here, along with an Arduino Uno to control everything, and the DTMF decoder board here. So with the phone jack, I now plugged it into a Y adapter, so one output goes to the phone, the other output is going here so that the DTMF decoder can listen in this way on the phone line. So similar to the project with the Arduino decoding what DTMF buttons are pressed, I expanded that sketch now to control this phone line module, and the connections here are noted in the sketch. Also I have this push button here so that when I press it, it will generate a ring. For example, over here in the serial monitor, I powered this up and it tells me the phone is on hook, so it's waiting for a call. And now I can press this ring button and it generates a ring for a couple of seconds just as a test. And I'm showing in the serial monitor what I'm expecting to have happen. Over here, looking at the sketch, up at the top I made reference on GitHub to the DTMF decoder board as well as this current project. The DTMF board has its pins going here on Uno and likewise for this new phone line board. And the push button for the ring is pin 10. So then after we initialize everything in the sketch, basically the control pins on this module need to be set low when we're not doing ringing on the phone. So at the beginning of every loop, I just set this in standby and throughout the loop, I'll just handle whether the phone is on or off hook, whether I want to listen for DTMF tones or whether I want to ring the phone. So we always start out as if we just powered up fresh and we're in standby, not doing anything. So the first thing I do is check if the phone has recently been picked up or put back on hook. So I'm storing the last known hook status. I take a current reading of the actual hook indicator pin from the module. If it's changed, I write on the serial monitor what it changed to. And then I now know, in case I want to ring the phone, if the push button has been pressed, I'll go out to generate a ring signal down in this function, but the first thing I do is check, are we on hook? If we're not on hook, the phone is picked up and we don't want to ring, so we just don't even do anything and we get back out. Otherwise, we enable ring mode on the module, and then we generate a toggle about 20 hertz on this other forward and reverse pin to generate the higher voltage ring signal, since we're in ringing mode, and we do this for about two seconds. And then we just quit, because it's only a demo sketch, so I just want to push a button, go and do a ring if the phone is on hook, a couple of seconds, and then just see what else is going on in the sketch. So the final thing in the main loop, again we read whether or not the phone is on hook. We only care to detect DTMF signals if the phone has been picked up. So only then go and check if there's currently any DTMF data. And that's really the same sketch as the previous PCB project. If we read on this DTMF decoder module that there is a new DTMF signal, we go in and decode it from the four bits print it out on the serial monitor, and then in case a button is being held down for an extra long time, we don't want to re-detect that, so we just wait here until there's no longer a valid DTMF signal, and basically then we're at the end of the main loop. We've already done whatever we wanted to do, there's no more ringing going on, so the phone line should be back to idle standby, so that's why we change these pins and make sure we're not in ring mode, and we've got these controls the way we need. So if I pick up the phone, it should say in the serial monitor, now the phone is off hook. So to verify, if I press the ring button, nothing is going to happen in that ringing function because the phone is off hook. 
but we can press DTMF tones. And those will show up in the serial monitor. And if we hang up the phone, it goes back on hook. And that's essentially the demo for this module to make sure all of the functions seem to work. And now that I can control all of these features and functionality of a plain old telephone service, I can work toward a bigger project with more capabilities and attempt to emulate a telephone central office more completely. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project.